Hey everyone, thank you for clicking on the video. If you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. So for those that are new, what I do is I take an electronic project from an old electronic magazine and I bring it to life. I gather the parts, I build the PC board, put the parts on and demonstrate it and put it in a case. That's what I do. So hopefully that interests you. And if it doesn't, well, try to hang in there anyway. Maybe you'll get some entertainment, which by the way, I should probably preface. I'm not a genius. I'm an electronic technician at the most. I, I, I just love building these projects. I get a kick out of it, and I enjoy showing you the process on how to build them. Again, I'm not an engineer. I'm just a lowly technician type person that's having a lot of fun, and that's what I like to do. It's not about education. It's about having some fun. So for today's art or project, what we're, it's a, going to be a two-parter. So this first part will build... Uh, a boost supply. So what's a boost supply? It'll convert 12 volts to a high voltage, let's say 200, 250. It's adjustable. And it comes from Mr. Carlson. Mr. Carlson has a Patreon page. And if you haven't already uh, subscribed to it, yes, it does cost money, but it's reasonable. A wealth of information. So I highly suggest, you know, subscribing to it. But in that Patreon page, there's a project and it's for this boost supply which I'm going to need. So the second part of the, this video, which will be the following week, hopefully, if I, everything works out, is to build a hybrid amplifier from Elector. So it comes from the July and August 2006, uh, the American version uh, magazine. And it's a Class A amplifier. It's not big, seven watts output, something like that. It's a Class A. and it's got a tube for the preamplifier and then a, a MOSFET for the output. So it's a hybrid. Ultimately, that's where we're going to uh, with this two project uh, video. So, but for now, what I want to do is just focus on the boost, up, uh, boost supply from Mr. Carlson. So I've actually built this boost supply in the past and I'm showing you the device that I used. So it was a magic eye tester essentially. So it would just show that the actual magic eye uh, lights up and you know you can adjust the um, actual closing of the eye um, and it uses a boost supply. So I'm going to take that boost supply from that project and apply it to this project for the actual hybrid amplifier. That's what I'm going to do. So let's um, end it there. And what I'm going to do is build the board. So I'm, I think I'm going to do this time. Some people have asked to show the process of the PC board making it. I'll just show a little bit about that. I've actually had lots of those examples in older videos, but I'll do it in this newer video. So let's get started with uh, the board. And I unfortunately, I can't show you the schematic for the boost supply. It's proprietary. So if you want to get the schematic for the boost supply, sign up to Mr. Carlson's Patreon page. Um, yeah, so let's uh, get started with the board and I'll bring it back in shortly. Okay, so I've got all of the parts and I forgot to mention in the intro that this project is, for the boost supply is actually a hybrid in itself because it uses some surface mount technology or surface mount devices and also through hole. And you can kind of see that on the uh, existing boost supply for that uh, Magic Eye tube tester. Anyway, uh, I, I'm pretty sure I have all the parts because I built this thing before and I bought extra parts, but I did actually buy some more parts just to make sure. I might actually make two of these only because uh, it'd be nice to have one spare, right? You never know when you need an adjustable high voltage supply. So that's where I'm going to go. Anyway, let's get on with the board. Again, I can't show you the schematic or the board, but I'll show you the board when it's done but I can't show you the schematic. Let's get that board done. All right, so I'm just about to start actually making the PC board. And I'll be really quick with this whole tone of transfer etching thing because I know it might bore the hell out of people. There's plenty of uh, videos out there that show how to make a PC board uh, with the tone of transfer and many other methods. But um, I am using um, this blue board or blue transfer paper, actually. You can see it there. and it really works good for me. I do have some paper, a 
kind of a special paper um, from Staples that actually works too. But I found the actual quality wasn't as great. This blue stuff really works well. So I'm kind of hooked on this stuff for now. Anyway, so because Mr. Carlson provides actual board layout, what you do is you print it out and then you just cut it accordingly. And of course, I've already pre-cut some PC boards and I'm ready to go. So I'm going to throw these in the laminator. I'll bring you back in at that point. Okay, so here is the actual laminator, laminator itself. And I'm putting, I've already run it two or three times already. And I'm just throwing it through the laminator. It's that simple. And the actual traces will then be transferred onto the actual PC board and then we can etch it. So that's how I do it. It's pretty simple. All right, let's move on to the next step. All right, so for those that haven't seen the etching system that I have, it's pretty simple. It I built a square box just out of some scrap wood and uh, I put two fans at the top, computer fans, and going out on some duct work and going out the window. It's that simple. And as far as the uh, business end goes here, I've got a Pyrex bowl. Don't use glass, it has to be Pyrex if you're going to use a burner. So I've got it just a little bit below medium. I'll crank it up a bit. And yeah, it's, uh, here's my boards. So I'll put one in. And I'll put the other one in. And now we wait. All right, so the boards are done. I've got them on the bench. But just a word of caution, if you are heating up your ferrochloride, make sure you let it cool down to room temperature only because when you try to empty that bowl there for example into the original container it's pretty stinky it's there are fumes that are emitted it's much better when it's at room temperature anyway uh let's go back to the bench all right so i've etched the boards as you can see there's two like i said i'm going to build two you never know when you need another one right and I'm kind of far back from the actual boards only because they're proprietary. So I don't want to uh, allow anybody to copy them. And, and that's what Mr. Carlson wants. And I agree. Anyway, you, you could see that I've tinned them also. And that's just you buy some liquid tin, put it in a small bowl, and then you put the board in and then it'll tin the copper traces. Anyway, they turned out really, really good. So the next step is to drill out where I need holes, right? Remember, this is half SMD and uh, through hole. Anyway, let's get on that. All right, so here's my drill press setup. So it's just a small Dremel drill with a very small drill press, and that's it. So let's get on with the drilling and building. All right, so I've got the booth supply completed. There's another one on the other bench for testing. And... It, the other one's working. I haven't checked this one out. Yeah, I'll have to check this out. But the, the maybe I didn't explain it correctly, but the whole intent here is to get 180 volts, right? So for the hybrid amplifier, which I'm going to build, that'll be another video, it requires 180 volts. And I was thinking to myself, well, you know, there's a couple ways I could get the 180 volts. I could build a separate power supply. But then I thought about the boost supply I built from Mr. Carlson. I figured maybe that'll be great. It's adjustable on top of that. And, you know, at least the input portion of it is pretty safe, right? Because this circuit takes 12 volts and it boosts it, believe it or not, from 90 volts to over 400. It's, it's an amazing little board, quite frankly. Great design by Mr. Carlson. Um, yeah, so let me just flip it over. So as you can see, there's a lot of hole, uh, through hole components, but there are some surface mount components on it too. Um, but pretty simple. Yeah, and once again, maybe what I'll just show you here is the schematic for, not for the boost board, but for the hybrid amplifier. I think I've showed you that already in the beginning, but as you can see on the for the tube, it actually requires 180 volts. And funny enough, the uh, pre-amplifier, where that transistor is in the middle, that requires 12 volts. But then you look on the right for the MOSFET, it requires, I think that's 18, I think. No, 16 volts. So I got some pretty weird voltages happening here. Um, and they're all different, which is unusual. But I'm up for the task. I, can, I think I can make this work. 
anyway, you know what? I'll just leave it at that. And when we build the hybrid amplifier, we'll talk more about that. Anyway, let's get uh, the uh, let's get the camera on the actual working unit. I'll bring you back in here shortly. All right, so here's the setup. I've got a transformer, about 20 volts coming out of it. And I just quickly built a 12 volt uh, regulator type uh, rectifier circuit. It's uh, I'm using the Monk boards. I think I mentioned it to you earlier that I'm, it was came from a Kickstarter. I think about about 50 of these boards, but they're great prototyping boards and it's going to fit the build because I'm going to use this other space here on this let's call it the power supply board for our other voltages, right? So we need a 16 volt for the actual MOSFET. And then we need another 12 volts for the, um, the preamplifier transistor portion. Anyway, it's going to, it's going to get quite full this board. Anyway, from the 12 volts that I get out, it's obviously going into our boost supply and then we're going to get a high voltage out of that. Um, yeah, so let's just give it a try. Okay, so as you can see, uh, we've got high voltage, right? And I've already got a preset to 180. That's what we need. But let me just cycle through it. So the lowest is 92, and we can go all the way up to 410. That's a lot. Now, of course, I only need 180, which is good. So mid-turn. I'm not too sure of the regulation of this boost supply. Now, we don't need a lot. I showed you on the schematic. We, it only uh, will supply the 12AX7, right? So it's not going to be a lot. It's not a power output tube. It's pretty benign. I think we're going to be okay with this boost supply. Um, but yeah, so I'm really looking forward to building the, the amplifier itself, right? The seven watt hybrid amplifier, and that's going to come next. So I think, uh, if you have any comments, please leave them. I would appreciate it, especially when it comes to the boost supply. Um, if, if you're not a Mr. Carlson subscriber, you should be because there's great circuits on there. I'm repurposing one of his, um, projects for this project. So it's, uh, there's a whole bunch of building blocks on that site too. All right. So I think I've talked enough about the boost supply and look forward to the next video, which will actually be the hybrid amplifier. I'm thinking, I, so I only have one 12 AX7. I, I, I built two boost supplies. So I'm thinking maybe I should build two, uh, amplifiers too, maybe for left and right. Not too sure yet, but for now, let's uh, just uh, end it here on the boost supply. Uh, thanks for watching. If you haven't checked out some of my other videos, please check them out and take care. Bye for now.